Now, our special guest is known to millions of you as Lord Grantham's dedicated valet, John Bates. Now, I know you're a massive fan of it as well. I'm a you? fan, absolutely. There you go. Fit. In the popular and award-winning drama series, Downton Abbey, of course, please welcome to Saturday Kitchen, it's Brendan Coyle. Great to have on the show. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me. Now, we know you're a brilliant actor, because I was reading uh, all about you, your film credits. Do you know how many film credits and TV credits you got? No. 42. Really? 42. Right. That's what you've got. And the awards are about double that, I think, for everything that you've <laughs> been doing. So. But amazing success. But are you any good at cooking? So we know you're a fan of the show. I'm, um, I'm keen. Keen? I think gung-ho is the word. I think what I lack in finesse, I make up for enthusiasm. Do you have the usual dash. two or three recipes and that's, that's it and you keep going back to them? Yeah, I do. I mean, one-pot meals. I mean, I try my hand, you know, I kind of, uh, I try to diversify, try to, yeah. you know... How do those two dishes sound, anyway? They sound fantastic. <laughs> Cooking with One Direction, who knew? Exactly. Oh, yeah, really? yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's a, that's Boy band, what haven't? is it like? <laughs> now, of course, at the end, end of today's program, yeah. we cook food heaven or food hell for Brendan. If it's something based on your favourite ingredient, uh, food heaven, or your nightmare ingredient, food hell. Now, because we're not live today, we're going to let uh, fate decide. We'll discuss that at the end of the show. Okay. But food heaven, what would it be? I've gone for the mighty prawn. So I always kind of go for seafood. I live on the North Norfolk coast, and it's great for fish and seafood there. So yeah. that's what I cook a lot of. And so yeah. I always go for the prawn option. So I knew you'd do something make... amazing. Well, we've got some amazing prawn. prawns as well. What about the dreaded food hell? Well, I really struggled with this because it's not a lot that I don't like. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I've gone for a dessert. I've gone for mer meringue. I don't get meringue. It's supposed to be chewy. It's supposed to be crunchy. I don't get it. So meringue. You don't get it. Well, I am a patient. I put down tripe, say. but you haven't gone for that. Oh, I am gone for tripe. No, I can't stand that either. <laughs> <laughs> so see the prawns or meringues for Brendan. Now for food heaven. I've got a great dish, a char-grilled Indian-style prawns. The prawns are peeled, rolled in a mixture of chilli, ginger, yoghurt and a load of spices and they're left to marinade. And I'm going to char-grill them and serve them with a Chinese-style pilau rice filled omelette. How does that sound? Oh, you're the man. I need to do something Sounds good to like me. That, yeah. Or Brenda could be facing food hell, meringues. I'm going to... This is good, though. I'm going to layer up chocolate sponge with coffee mousse, chestnut mousse and broken meringue and then ice it with Italian meringue, scorch it on the top and garnish it with a, just a bit of festive holly. It's not camp at all, is it? That's not camp at all, is <laughs> it? Actually, it looks <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tastes good win, as well. Win. Because we're not live here today, there's no vote. Instead, we've got New Year's surprise up our sleeves. Fate is going to decide what Brendan will be having uh, at the end of the show. So find out and keep watching to find out exactly how we're going to do it. So let's meet our other chef's table guests. As usual, there are two Saturday Kitchen viewers. Rachel, you one of the wrote in. Who have you brought along with you? Um, I brought Tris. Uh, and both friends? Yes. Now, looking at this, you work in South America in Patagonia. Yeah, I will be anyway. And your friend Tris works in Alaska. Yeah. How cold is it out there, generally? Because it's you know, cold here, but yeah. proper um, cold. No, no, so, summertime it's not that cold. It's uh, average temperature about five degrees uh, during summer uh, when, nice. the, when the snow is melting. But in wintertime, uh, Svalbard drops to about minus 20. Oof. Lovely. Yeah, and apparently your ears freeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lovely. Great. I'll talk to you both a bit later, and if you've got any questions, fire away. Should we get cooking? Oh, yes. Sounds good to me. Right, up first is probably the most successful and famous of Plymouth's living chefs. Well, second most, because his brother's a better cook than he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, wow. there you go. <laughs> Your Fantastic. first dish. Thank you very much. Dive into that. I don't know where you start on it, really, but is it like a fish where you start in the middle and work your way out? Is that... I'd literally just put a knife into it and then scrape the flesh back off the bones. Yeah. There you That's go. It. See how it just falls off the bone? So... You want it like that. You don't want it... Yeah. If it's undercooked, it won't fall off the bone. If it's over, it'll fall apart when you pick yeah. it up. Garlic so chives, that's a new one on me, is that a kind of... Yeah, lovely, strong, intense flavour that works with the mm. citrus. They I are think. strong, but they often go in salad, salads and bits and pieces, yep. those little sort but of But with the ginger chives. and the chilli and everything else... That's fantastic. Do you like really, that? Really, really beautiful. Mm. There you go. I don't think these guys are going to get any of it, but... Well, at least I'll dive in. Uh, we need some wine to go with this, so we thought we'd usher in the new year with not one wine expert, but two. We sent our very own Mr and Mrs mm. Wine, Peter Richards and Susie Barry, to Hampshire this week. But did they agree on the choice to go with James's Super Seabream? Watch this. It certainly is. Oh, how sweet. There you go. What do you reckon? Oh, I think that's beautiful. Oh, I think it's a really, really, really good um, combination to go with the ginger and the citrus and everything. Perfect. A little bit more money than we normally spend. £10.99, but I think well worth it. Bit of a bargain there. You're diving into the fish. That's not moving anywhere. 
Delicious food, as always, from Rick, that Nazi Goring, would make a great breakfast on New Year's Day, now I reckon. Now, I've got another great breakfast idea to show you right now. Right now it's Eggs Benedict with waffles. Now, you can just take this recipe and just, just do the waffles if you want. So, first thing I'm going to do is get our bacon on to cook. So, a little bit of oil in here. Get that on. And pan fry this. So, we'll just put a few slices in there to get it going. Now, you want to credit your mum or your auntie to start you off in your acting career, don't you? So you were brought up in a, a steel-working town. When that shut down, wasn't it your, your mum that told you to ring your auntie? You had a, a theatre in uh, Ireland? Yeah, she, um, she had this uh, actor studio, the Focus Studio. And we saw, I saw a play for the first time. I was 15. I saw Richard III. And it sort of gave me the notion that you can do that for a living, you know, as well as making right. a play live. So you genuinely knew at that age that you, that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, it was, so that's when it first occurred to yeah. me. It was a kind of growing notion that you could do that, you know, and it was just a great thing to see. I just loved it. It was the first, first theatre I ever saw. But and getting it started must be a tough tough thing in this job, wouldn't it? Oh. Yes, it is. I mean... Um, Depending on where you live, of course. If you live down in London, it's easy because everything seems to be here, but where you were, it's quite a yeah, tough I was, start, I suppose. I was just very, very lucky that my dad's cousin was a very well-respected uh, figure in, in Dublin theatre. So that's where, that's where I went. I had sticks and left and went to, to start there, training there. She had this kind of real method, intense acting studio, The Focus. And talking about your family, well, your, your great-uncle was Sir Matt Busby. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised right. you didn't go to football then, or something. Well, I wasn't good enough. You learn quite quickly about uh, whether you're good, bad, or indifferent at football, where I come from. You know, you, I, I, I knew quite early I wasn't going to make the grade. And that's no bad thing in your formative years. You're not going to make it to that. Yeah. Well, it was a great thing to grow up with if you love football, definitely. You know? Fantastic. So it was a fantastic thing. And especially, I was talking to the studio guest Rachel here, and she said, who do you support? I said, Man United. And she said, Glory supporter or a Manchester fan. <laughs> so it's good to have that in the store. Yeah, you know, yeah. For people with that. Yeah. So and that was a great thing. That instilled in me a great love of football and, and United, of course. But starting your career, theatre was the, a fundamental part of it. Mm. Do you think that's one of the best things way to learn? Because a lot of people who have done TV and film want to go back into theatre or certainly try theatre for the first time. Yeah. But you put your teeth in it. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm old enough to be starting out and cutting my teeth in, in the old rep system. The Lyric in Belfast is where I kind of really kicked off. And it's a great grounding, you know, you're doing, you're performing at night, you're rehearsing the play for the next, the next yeah. play, you know, uh, during the day, and it's, it's full on, so, um, and then I came to London, and I had political theatre, and pub theatre, and, you know, you name it, and I just worked up through the ranks, Royal Court, and National, yeah. and, you know, it's, and uh, then it's TV, a great grounding. Yeah, and, but your credits in television, they read like a, like a who's who. I think everybody's done the bill. Who hasn't done the bill? <laughs> yeah. Everyone, that's, that's part of your apprenticeship, you've got to do the bill. That was my first telly job. Was bill. it? Yeah, it was terrifying, yeah. you got down there, and, um... Um, it was a great thing. Yeah, well, everyone the great does. thing about your career it seems that you've got all manner of different roles, from Shameless to Light Rise to, and obviously now, Downton Abbey. Yeah. I mean, incredible. Yeah, I mean, that's what you strive for, range, you know, you try, yeah. you're trying to mix it up as much as you can. It's nice. But did you know when, you, when Downton Abbey was certainly commissioned that it would be what it is? It was, or was it looking at the budget and thinking, is this going to work? Because it, it is the most expensive program made on television, isn't it? Is it? It's about a million pound an episode. Is it? You obviously don't get paid. No, they're not spending on <laughs> <much. laughs> <That's it. laughs> Well, you can see where that goes, actually. It is, it's it's uh, high production value. Yeah. And you can see where that money is spent. But um, we knew, you know, that the pedigree of the people involved, the director, with a couple of great scripts. We only give yeah. the first two. And you kind of get a nose for these things. I, I knew, just knew it was really, really strong. I saw the cast. Yeah. So we knew it was going to be a good product. We knew it would play well. It kind of came with a certain but when you think guarantee, about, but you never know. You but, can't but you think about it, how TV's gone, it's gone, dare I say, to cheaper and cheaper programmes. Something like this that books the trend, yeah. it shows what can be done and, and, the, and the success from it, because it's, it's a global success, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, and the first series it was a high-risk venture because so much was spent on it and it could have right. flopped and that would have been a disaster. But um, what I love about it and what I love about our producers is they've expanded the second series and will with the third as well. Yeah. They've got more characters, they made it broader. And it's not uh, devaluing the, the punters, you know, the audience. Yeah. Um, it's investing in the show, and I think people respond to that, definitely. And it's gone global, yeah. It's, uh, and your storyline, uh, you know, you, you're in and out of it, but it seems to be, you know, you've, well, your storyline now, you've just been arrested as well. So you, you, the storyline is very much emphasis on certain people, but it's come on to you now. It's your, almost your turn to get Yes, yeah. it's a kind of, uh, it's Julian spinning his plates, you know, it's come around to Bates this yeah. time, and we all know the devastating consequences of what happened on Christmas night. And, yes. um, and so, does Bates come back for the first series? I, I can't say right now.
Can't say. Uh, <laughs> Can't say what say. Well, I'll have a quick run through. We've got in here our bacon. I've got my little hollandaise made. I'm going to get my waffles on. This is the hot waffle iron, and they want literally about two minutes when you put homemade them in the waffle waffles. Iron. So homemade waffles, so that you basically just ladle these in, and they sit in the waffle iron for two minutes. Really? That's that. Some people might have got these this Christmas. Well, this is just quickly able to show you how to use it. In here is flour, baking powder, butter, salt, sugar, um, and that's it really, a bit of double cream. And that comes together in terms of batter. I've got that on there. I've got my hollandaise sauce almost finished. And I'm going to quickly poach my egg. But as well as doing Downton Abbey, which is out on DVD this Christmas as well, so it's series yeah. one and two, isn't it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As well as that, you're doing something new as well. Tell us about this thing that you're doing on Sky One, is it? We've just um, completed filming this. Very excited about this. It's um, I don't get to do many comedies. I don't get up yeah. for many comedies. And this is a eight one-hour comedy drama called right. Starlings. It's produced by Steve Coogan and Henry Normal for Baby Cow. And it's written by uh, Matt King and Steve Edge. They're fantastic writers. Okay, just to finish this off, we've got the chives which I'll just chop up, that's that done, and they can just go in the blender. So hollandaise sauce, really simple, just vinegar, start off with egg yolks, soft melted butter, and that's Good hollandaise job. sauce done, mm -hmm. and then we'll lift up this, so hopefully, oh, there you go, you've got a little waffles, lift these off, yeah, it's fantastic. Is that from your range cookware? No, it's one? not, yeah. You should get one out. No. <laughs> no. There you go. I will place that on there. Thank you very much. It's quite and American, got this, isn't it? Sorry? It's quite American, this, isn't it? Yeah, well, the waffles and stuff like that, I just think you can mix and match the flavours in there as well. Yeah. Soft poach egg. You can do these in advance. Mm. Ice cold water. Ice cold water. And all we do is grab the bacon over the top. So it's on there. And then we've got our... Nice bit of hollandaise. Get, I'll get ready, shall I? And that's the lot. And hopefully, if the crew, if he gets in focus, <laughs> lofty, you see. <laughs> the crew, they've all got starting there blocks you go. on this Look show. Look at that. Thank you very much. Wow, look at that. Je t'aime, je t'aime. <laughs> Dive into that one. Tell us what you think of that. Let's get a bit of that hollandaise. It's definitely a new year's year waffle. breakfast. But those waffles, great. They're nice. Really simple. Happy with that? You know the way to a man's heart, James? Well, best of luck in the new series of Dancing Abbey. If we see you back again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Possibly a clue there. Uh, so what we'll be cooking for Brendan at the end of the show, we'll be facing Food Heaven. Uh, food Heaven is prawns, and I've got a great dish in mind for this. A char-grilled Indian style prawns. The prawns are peeled and rolled with a mixture of ginger, chilli, yoghurt and loads of Indian spices, and they're char-grilled and served with some pilau rice stuffed in a Chinese omelette. Or Brendan could be facing Food Hell, meringues and a luxurious chocolate chestnut and meringue cake. The chocolate cake is layered with chestnuts, coffee mousse and crushed meringue and finally iced with Italian meringue, scorched with a blow top, torch and finished with a festive sprig of holly. Now because we're not live here, there's no vote today, so we're going to let fate decide which dish Brenda will be eating at the end of the show. So James, remember you're not voting, so which would you prefer? The I'm pretty sure the cake's going to win this one. I like the sound of the cake, Brendan, with the meringues and stuff and chestnuts. It sounds gorgeous. Rachel, prawns or cake? Uh, prawns. Ah, oh, one each. There you go. Mm, but it's not up to you. Tooth. We're going <laughs> to have to wait till the end of the show to see what fate has in store. Now it's time to get some easy baking suggestions from Lorraine Pascal. That's the only challenge coming up a little bit later on. I will be cooking for Brendan at the end of the show. We'll be facing food heaven. Prawns are my Indian style prawns with pilau stuffed omelette. All food hell meringue and a luxurious chocolate and chestnut meringue. Nick, are you going to go for the prawns? Are you going to go for the luxurious chocolate cake with meringue and chestnuts? You don't get a decision. But prawns. Prawns. No question. 100%. But you don't get to decide, like I said. <laughs> Take that over there. Meanwhile, I'll just finish <laughs> off this piece of meat over here. So yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. The smell so, yeah. looks great, doesn't it? That? Yeah, it smells incredible. Look, it's lovely. I would say you can you do it with anything else, but you kind of wouldn't want anything yeah. else with that, could you? Really? Right. Nice and simple. Roll Dive VT, in. I might be some yeah, time. Yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> but would you leave it to rest before you actually carve it? Would you say that was the best thing? Yeah, or? roast it, leave it to rest for about 20 minutes. Yeah. And then what's nice, what we did here is we just flashed it back in the oven to bring that heat back into yeah. it. Yeah. And then carve it. That is sensational. The crust and. That sauce is beautiful. Exactly. I've got a feeling you ain't going to get any of this, Mr. Tanner. No way. Yeah. It's got to get past me first as well. In the meantime, let's go back to Winchester to see which wine Peter and Susie has chosen to go with. Nick's fantastic lamb. 
and he's still eating it. It has gone down, it's gone down, and it's come back. Yeah, again. yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Good food needs good wine. This one just under a tenner, but a bit of a bargain, I think. I think it's excellent, and, and the age of the Rioja to go yeah. with the lamb is really nice. It's nice to get an older, more yeah. mature Rioja. Very good wine. It's <laughs> Tanner. It's gorgeous. Good, great combination with the wine, but the flavour and that sauce as well, the fresh mint, the oregano. Mm. Um, yeah, I'll be nicking that recipe. It's, <laughs> very, very it's still good. good. I'll trade you. You could join us here at the chef table sometime in the series. All you have to do is write to us with your name, address, and most importantly, a daytime phone number. So will Brenda get his idea of food heaven, those <laughs> prawns, or food hell meringues? We'll find out what fate decides after some seasonal supper ideas from Nigel Slater. Now, Right, it's time to find out whether Brendan will be facing food heaven or food hell. Brendan, just to remind you, food heaven, if you can't see it already, lovely pile Monster of prawns. prawns on there. These are fantastic. You're warming up, that's where they could be cooked as well, Comedy with a nice little sort of pilau rice wrapped in an omelette, uh, which he's going to make because he's very good at it as well. <laughs> that's a very, very thin omelette. And I thought for food hell with the old meringue, I thought I'd just I bring together two ingredients which I love. I love chestnut puree together with meringue. It's famous in a dessert called Mont Blanc. Um, and it's basically just chestnut puree with whipped cream. But with that, I'm going to build up a gatto. And then I thought I'd serve that with a little Italian meringue around the edge. And we've got plenty of brandy to cover up the flavour of the meringue. Okay. So meringue two ways in a massive great cake. But like I said, we're not uh, live today, so there's no audience vote. We're going to let fate decide in the way of these two things. Leftover from Christmas. The cheapest chocolate snowman <laughs> in the planet. <laughs> made by you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, made by me, yeah. Uh, inside one of them is the word heaven. Inside one of them is the word hell. I see where we're going. Exactly. There's a hammer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Choose a snowman. Um, okay. It's this one here. Yeah. Yep. Try not to make it too hard. Yep. Yeah. See what we've got in here. You have got. <sighs> you have got hell. I hate prawns. There you go. Not good. It's but right. just to prove, 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 there is the dreaded food hell in there. You get to eat all this, guys. There you go. You get to eat all the chocolate. Do you want to break that and open it up to show us what's inside? Oh, yeah. There you go. So we can lose this out of the way, guys. Okay. Lose the prawns out of the way. Because the first thing we do is need to get on and do an Italian meringue. And to do that, we need to get our sugar and water. Boiling away. So in we go there, in we go there. And we boil the sugar and the water very, very rapidly, which we'll put it on here, to make Italian meringue. So at the same time now, guys, which these guys are going to get on over here, uh, we need our egg whites. <coughs> so we're going to do two mixes, one of which has got the cream, and we par whip the cream with yep. coffee, uh, ice and sugar, and we put mascarpone cheese in. And the other one has got this. This is sweet and chestnut puree. Delicious. You'll be able to buy this still in the stores around the festive time. Brilliant. You put that in together with mascarpone cheese and finish it. It's low fat, this. Okay. Okay. Low fat. Definitely it's low fat. It's so good over Christmas. Yeah, it? exactly. So over here, I'll bring this over. Italian meringue. Move that away. So this is just a different way of making meringue. Now, it's called an Italian meringue or boiled meringue. Yeah, because basically the sugar is boiling. So if you boil sugar, like I am doing, in water, it will boil beyond boiling point. It didn't tend it to rise. So um, it goes to well over 150 degrees centigrade, okay. which that is happening already. And it's it dangerous in here today, isn't it? Yeah, well, you're getting warm anyway. We're warming it up for you. So I'll get that on. Excuse the noise for a minute, but that'll happen quite quickly. This goes to what we call on the sugar thermometer, which you have on here. It's what we call softball. It's, um, it's 121 degrees centigrade. So as the water evaporates off, all you're left with is a sugar solution, and this basically gets hotter and hotter. Until it gets hot, it turns to caramel. Oh, okay. And that's what you end up with. All right? So that's that one. Chestnut puree we're doing there nicely. Yep. Sure, I'll tell you what we'll do. As soon as it's New Year... Sorry. Stick the prawns on. Happy New Year. There you go. So close this. <laughs> yeah, you can close it. Yeah. So the mix is filling up now. Like I said, this is a variation on a on a classic dish or two classic dishes. You've got gatto opera, which is uh, layers of chocolate cake and coffee and all manner of different things layered up with covered with a chocolate uh, sauce over the top. And then you've got this, which is Mont Blanc, which is chestnut puree, and this. Two great combinations okay. on its own right. I believe it. Trust me. Oh, yeah. I trust you. But with this, we thought we'll get a little cake as well. So this is just a, a chocolate cake. You can just take a standard chocolate cake, which we're then going to slice up 
How are we doing with our fillings, guys? Just getting yeah. there, getting there. Just getting there. Very easy to work on this one. There you go. Now, this will actually start to go. You can see that going now as it starts to change. <laughs> and then we take this and we pour this carefully onto the egg whites. Oh, wow. So while they're in there, you can see it's actually hot as it's in there, yeah. but it will make an Italian rang, so you don't need to cook that anymore. How long does that take? Two or three minutes now. And then it's great to use for um, uh, lemon rang pie, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and all we do, it's very similar how you make marshmallows. How's our prawns doing? Really right? coming on well, yeah. yeah. There you go. And then we can grab this Oops, and right, slice yeah. it into pieces. Mm, okay. So, guys, if you can, uh, have you got all the fillings ready? Yep. yep, fillings ready. Right, while your fillings ready, you can uh, continue to slice and slice these if you yep. could. Okay. I'll start off with that one. That's a coffee one, yeah? Yes, yep. So, a coffee one. Do you want that, James? James? What we do? Yep, good sorry. Good. Yeah, a little bit of that. Pour it over there. Two minutes. Then we pour that on. So, we continue to keep layering it all up. Slightly different to the food that you get on the show, Downton Abbey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do they actually like cook traditional sort of food? You work with Leslie Nicola, I believe. Yeah, exactly. But do they cook traditional food on there anyway? Though? Yeah, they do. We have um, home econ what are they called? Home economics. Those people, they come on and they, uh, yeah, we've got a whole spread. Be hungry. That's the key. Yeah. So what we're going to do is better that. And then we're going to take some of this chestnut one and spread it all out. So I'll take another one. Keep slicing it, boys. Keep slicing it. We're getting there. There you go. And then we'll put a bit of this crushed meringue on it. Yeah. Sticky meringue. Mm. This is proper, proper pudding. Yeah, we're listening. There you go. Okay. Take the prawns yeah. out now. I'll take another one. Right, if you can stop the machine and then uh, take the uh, with a whisk out, get all the meringue off the whisk, that would be great. So that's that one. Just when you start putting that one on. And another one enough? of the chestnut one, the final layer. Have we got any of that left? Perfect. Good. Perfect, perfect. And spread that over the top. Right over now. This one's quite important that you get those nice and flat. Really, that's that one. I'll put that one on as well. Proper guy, guy. Hey? Proper guy. Oh. Proper cake, isn't Lovely. it, really? Lovely. 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 Carefully. Now, the idea is you ice a cake is you ice the top. So even though this is obviously meringue, treat icing the same. You ice the top bit, and as the top falls, there your bits for the edge, oh, yeah. like I'm doing. See, so when you go around the edge like that, but this is Italian meringue, remember? So it's slightly different texture to the other one. Cold meringue. Can you fire up the blowtorch, please, guys? There you go. So no, you're there. But you, what you have got is all the nice flavours of those two delicious dishes, which I love. That. Gatto opera and the uh, Mont Blanc, and then what you can do is just change the texture slightly on the top, and then go around the edge like a baked Alaska. Wow! That's your idea of hell, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, tripe was my idea of hell. Tripe. Right. Right. I'm not it's touching tripe. 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 Yes. Uh, the last time I had it was at was at uh, Leeds. Tripe. There's a great place in Leeds Market, if you're ever up there, that actually sell tripe. It's wonderful. Tripe with onions. It's really nice. Yeah. Mm. But slightly different to this. Well, there you have it. Where's that holly gone, boys? Holly, holly, holly. holly? You missed it. Where is it? Ta-da! <laughs> Done. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. that is a there you have it. Nice work. and simple. And then I would say dive in. I don't know how you're going to do it, but... Yeah. Um, You've got your prawns there as well. Yeah. Look at that. Thank you very much. There you go. But you have to eat a bit of this first. But yeah. All you do is you just grab a knife. You've got a plate there, boys. Can you grab us a plate? There you go. And we get a wedge out. Now, the great thing about this, it's like tiramisu, so the better... Look at that. 
groans from all around the studio. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Mm. I'll try it. <laughs> Give them a ring. See if yeah. my aversion. Dive right. in. I've got a mouthful of meringue. Now, to go with this, Peter and Susie have chosen the Campbell's Rutherglen Muscat from Waitrose, uh, £10.99. There you go. Do you want to bring over the glasses, guys? I would say you probably won't get any, but I think, no, no, I no. think it's safe to say you may no. even get a portion of this sort of stuff. <laughs> Dive into that. There you go. Tell us what you think. No, I'm good, man. Dive in. Dive into the cake. Mm. Enjoying that? That was fantastic. Followed Thank by you. meringue. I'm a cake and eat it. <laughs> um, best of luck with Starlings, the new sitcom. There Thanks, you go. James. Thanks well, for that. Well, that's all for today on Saturday Kitchen. Thanks to James Tanner, Nick Watt, and Brendan Coyle. Uh, cheers to Peter Richards and Susie Barry for the wine choices, and today's chef's table guests, Rachel and Tris. And remember, all the recipes are cooked to the studio, of course, on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a brilliant New Year's Eve. And whatever you do, we'll see you here live in 2012. A very good. Happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year. Dive in. Got some cake. Dive into that one. Tell us what you think. Good one, that. Mm. It's really good.